Permafrost is a thick surface layer of soil that remains frozen throughout the year, primarily in the Arctic regions. These frozen conditions preserve organic material, for instance, think of frozen woolly mammoths. In 2016, permafrost melt in Siberia caused a reindeer that had died 75 years earlier from anthrax to become exposed to the air. In this remote part of Russia, one boy died and 120 others were hospitalized. Russian officials called this permafrost a Pandora's box, as they had no idea what's in the frozen soil. Was climate change the cause of these zombie pathogens? This video isn't meant to be used as a scare tactic. It is an icebreaker, a glimpse into why 97% of climate scientists are worried about climate change. We hope that it can ease conversations with family over the holidays, keeping things rational and productive by debunking the myths and encouraging the science. Let's dig deeper into why the permafrost melted by starting with the basics. Electromagnetic radiation, in simplest terms, are waves with a characteristic wavelength, frequency, and energy. Longer wavelengths have less energy and shorter wavelengths have more energy. Light is electromagnetic radiation. We are familiar with visible light. It's what we can see with the naked eye. The sun emits both visible and ultraviolet radiation. UV radiation is why we use sunscreen. The shorter wavelengths have a lot of energy, and that causes our skin damage. Only about 50% of direct or indirect radiation from the sun reaches Earth's surface. Some of the radiation is scattered or reflected by clouds or particles in the atmosphere. Snow and ice also reflect solar radiation back into space. This reflection of radiation off of a bright surface is called the albedo effect. The roughly 50% of short wavelength high energy UV visible radiation that does reach Earth is absorbed, loses energy, and is re-emitted as long wave infrared radiation. We can think of infrared as heat radiation. A good way to visualize this is by considering heat vision goggles that view infrared light reflected off of objects. Red, orange, and yellow hues indicate more infrared radiation and thus more heat. Following what happens next to the re-radiated infrared radiation is key to understanding climate change. Some infrared energy passes through our atmosphere. However, the atmosphere is made up of various gaseous compounds. Some of the gases can absorb this infrared radiation and again re-radiate the heat energy back to Earth. These compounds are called greenhouse gases, named for the warming effect at the Earth's surface, which is similar to a greenhouse. Carbon dioxide is a compound that consists of a carbon and two oxygen atoms and is perhaps the most important greenhouse gas. When infrared radiation hits the molecule at a particular frequency, the carbon dioxide goes into an excited state. It wiggles around a bit, but eventually must relax. To do this, it needs to release the energy it absorbed in any direction. The greenhouse effect is not all bad. Without the greenhouse effect, we wouldn't be here. Earth's average temperature would be negative 0.4 degrees Fahrenheit. So what's the problem with greenhouse gases? If you take anything away from this video, I hope it is this. The rate of carbon dioxide being introduced to the atmosphere, primarily from the burning of fossil fuels, is unprecedented. Dr. Charles David Keeling was able to take the first accurate measurements of carbon dioxide in the 1960s, and with consistent measurements saw a clear positive trend with seasonal variations. Unequivocally, the concentration of carbon dioxide is increasing in the atmosphere, and quickly. And with this increase comes an inherent increase in average global temperature due to the greenhouse effect we just described. So what though? Hasn't carbon dioxide been this high in concentration in the past? It's always important to ask these questions. I now present the last 800,000 years of carbon dioxide concentration in the atmosphere, where we see we have not passed above the 300 parts per million line until the last 100 years. With all of this background information in mind, let's get back to our original question. What is melting the permafrost layer? You guessed it, it's us. Primarily countries that use tons of fossil fuels, like the United States, the United Kingdom, and China. We can see clearly from the time series from NASA on the left that average global temperatures are rising, and the worst effects are seen in high-latitude regions where permafrost is found. This part of the conversation is where you lose most family members. Remember, we're not singling anyone out. We all benefit from fossil fuels. But how do we know it's actually us? Besides the clear trends between concentration and the temperature increase coinciding with technological advancements, the strongest measurable evidence is isotopes. Isotopes are different forms of the same element that differ in mass. There are three isotopes of carbon, carbon-12, 13, and 14, listed in order from lightest to heaviest. Fossil fuels were once plants, and plants preferentially take up the lighter isotope, carbon-12. When fossil fuels are used, the pink line indicating carbon dioxide concentration goes up, adding carbon-12 into the atmosphere, while the concentration of carbon-13 goes down, as indicated by the blue line. This dilution would not happen in the absence of man-made emissions. This is known as the Seuss effect. Though some laws have been put in place to reduce harmful CO2 emissions, the world is currently on track to warm up to almost 6 degrees Fahrenheit over the course of the century. Wildfire seasons are progressively getting longer, too, with the global burnable area nearly doubling in size. Extreme weather events such as droughts, hurricanes, heavy rain, and snowfall are all occurring more frequently than ever before. What can we do to mitigate the effects of climate change? There's no single solution, but holding corporations accountable for their emissions levels, buying electric vehicles, and supporting sustainable agriculture are just a few simple things that you can do to help. Overall, we hope that you have a happy holiday and that this video was able to help explain some aspects of climate change to your relatives.